Um, hi, uh, my name is Ksenia. I am a Klihaus software engineer. I work at Klihaus for two years now. Uh, and I'm going to give a talk about uh, uh, how we read, uh, how we use object storage and uh, how we optimize performance from it. Uh, so first of all, uh, it goes without saying that uh, computers in Klihaus is blazing fast. But uh, what about storage? About storage, it depends. And uh, it depends on the storage you use. Um, most uh, traditional use cases to use uh, local storage, for example, SSD, HDD, or uh, network attached storage, uh, EBS, or something else. Uh, and then there is uh, an option about which uh, very little amount of people knows, uh, is uh, to store your files in read-only mode on a static HTTP server. And uh, also there is another option is to store your files on an object storage. So the, there are some examples, AWS S3, uh, GCP, Azure Blob Storage, and a few other. And uh, Clickhouse can actually work on top of them, on top of them all. Uh, so let's first of all, uh, tell what is object storage if uh, somebody doesn't know. Uh, object storage is a distributed storage. Uh, it usually provides some HTTP API um, and uh, inside it, uh, there are objects which are called blobs and um, they have some path um, and uh, they are also immutable. The storage itself has a, a flat structure uh, and uh, it is actually very different from traditional file systems. Like uh, there are no seeks, no hard links, no appends, and so on. Uh, but why would you want to use this object storage? There are pros and cons as uh, in any system. Uh, first of all, uh, object storage provides you with inf infinite uh, data storage. You do not need to care about um, running out of disk space. Also, it is highly reliable, and uh, reliability is uh, built in inside the system. It scales automatically, and um, the storage itself is cheap, and also it provides high throughput. But uh, as every system, it has some drawbacks. Um, for example, it has big latency. Requests uh, which are reads and writes, they are not free, and uh, the API is limited compared to the traditional file system. Um, so, uh, how do we use object storage in Glee House? Uh, we use it for merge tree table engines, which is the most uh, popular, like the most basic uh, table engine in Glee House. And uh, what we did, we designed a ab file system abstraction, uh, made merge tree table engines uh, work on top of this abstraction, uh, then implemented the abstraction for the object storages. Uh, which we mentioned uh, in one of the first slides. So for all these object storages or um, for, um, they uh, have shared the same limitation if uh, they are compatible with each other. Uh, so then uh, what's next? Uh, we need to optimize uh, read and write performance for these storages. Uh, and what precisely? Uh, precisely we need to utilize the high throughput of the object storages and uh, get rid of the most uh, um, but uh, of the disadvantages is uh, the high latency of the queries. So to understand how we optimize read performance, we need to understand how reading actually is done in Clickhouse. Um, I'll tell about how reading in uh, merge tree table engines is done. So first of all, the basics. Um, the storage is column-oriented, uh, index is sparse and fits in memory. Uh, columns are compressed, like the data of the columns is compressed. Um, in order to read this compressed data, we have marks. Uh, they allow to read uh, only the required data according to the index. Uh, marks are located in the MRK extension file, uh, and uh, the data itself is located in the bin extension file. And uh, this uh, two pair files is uh, for the each column because the storage is column oriented. Um, as you see on the picture, there are uh, two, like uh, the place between these uh, uh, two arrows, 
uh, is called a granule and uh, uh, we read uh, the data by granules and also parallelize by them. Uh, so uh, we have a query, we analyze it, uh, uh, figure out which uh, data we need to read, uh, we read it, decompress, uh, and then process the results. But um, how it is actually optimized? Uh, first of all, um, we parallelize it. And uh, how we do that, we have uh, for each query a certain number of threads, uh, which is uh, defined by setting max threads. Um, and uh, these threads um, are given um, ranges of marks between parts to read. Uh, and uh, each thread reads uh, these ranges for all columns. Like uh, the same color is uh, the task for one thread. So uh, a range of marks, but uh, one thread reads them for all columns. Uh, and uh, actually, for all columns, uh, uh, we read them one by one. Uh, but parallelism is uh, between the mark ranges. So what if we have a huge number of columns? Uh, remember, the latency to object storage is big. And uh, it means that uh, the query will be slow. Uh, so we need to somehow optimize it. And actually, it is obvious that uh, we need to add parallelism uh, between the columns as well as uh, between the mark ranges. Uh, but remember, we have a limited number of threads. Uh, so we cannot actually allocate more threads to do that. And what we actually do is um, we do the prefetch. And what is a prefetch? Is It is a uh, asynchronous request to read the data. But uh, this asynchronous request is done uh, to the thread pool uh, which has a fixed number of threads, and this uh, thread pool is single per server. Um, so each uh, thread goes through all columns and does the prefetch, and then goes uh, through the same columns once again and uh, does the reading. But um, uh, given that you did a asynchronous request to read this data, for the first columns, you will actually lead, uh, wait for these columns to be loaded, but for further columns, um, they, will, they will be already waiting to be taken in memory, and uh, you will not wait at all. So this optimization really makes sense for a large number of columns. Um, this is uh, in more detail how what I just explained. And uh, let's uh, talk about uh, the limitations of it. Um, this was about the data. But uh, we didn't, didn't say anything about uh, the marks. Remember, the marks is uh, what we need to reach the data. Um, so, and the second limitation is uh, the max threads uh, limitation. Uh, because uh, turns out uh, the parallelism is uh, really limited by this setting. Um, and so this is where it stacks. So first of all, what to do with marks? Uh, we load them, them asynchronously too. Uh, we start loading them at the start of query. And also we have to save them in mark cache. So for further queries, they will be already saved. And uh, what we do with uh, a limited number of max threads? Um, so we have, uh, for example, three threads. And we have uh, read tasks. Um, so if we have three threads, uh, limitation and three tasks, then uh, all of them will be parallelized. But what if you have a lot of read tasks? They will not be executed. They will be waiting uh, for threads to uh, come and take them. And this is uh, kind of slow and feels like we can uh, actually parallelize that too. Uh, so that's true. And uh, we will do that. Um, so. Once again, what is a read task? It is uh, a part to read and uh, ranges within part which we need to read, mark ranges. And um, what we can do, we can actually once again prefetch them. Um, the thread pool is limited, but uh, uh, we will utilize it uh, much more if we prefetch uh, for all the parts and for all the marks. Or it is also possible to prefetch uh, not for all, but uh, for a limited number of them. So the thread pool will actually be utilized because um, if you prefetch only for all the columns and uh, 
this number is multiplied by the number of threads, then uh, the utilization is not actually full. And uh, if you do more prefetching um, for, for all the tasks we have, then it will be utilized. But uh, again, here's the problem. It is, uh, if you want to prefetch all the data, it will be uh, very memory inefficient. Um, it might lead to OOM. So you need to limit the number of prefetches. So the next optimization, uh, we also have uh, a local uh, cache on the local disk. Uh, what is cache if uh, somebody doesn't know? It is a temporary storage location for some data, uh, which is stored uh, somewhere else, uh, but uh, this storage, uh, this uh, cache storage is uh, limited uh, and stores some subset of data and uh, the data itself is uh, somewhere where, where the access to it is slow. Um, so the cache consists of file segments. It is a limited side segments of the file. Um, they're removed from cache by the cache eviction algorithm uh, or when the file is removed from cache. Uh, we cache the data on reads, writes, and background merges. Um, as you might know, uh, files in Glickhouse are immutable, uh, so the cache is also immutable, so it makes things easier. Uh, that's uh, about cache. So let's uh, take a look at the performance results. Um, some generating data, the query takes uh, 16 seconds. And so uh, then if you turn on the optimizations, it takes uh, two seconds. That's all. Uh, any questions? Yes. Just uh, yes. interested in to know uh, the uh, object storage APIs is it, do, do you provide compatible APIs like S3 or is it a different protocol? Um, repeat the question for the mic. You said that if you said if we provide compatible API to um, S3 compatible systems, like if uh, the system is compatible with S3, then it can be used for the storage. Yes. And even if it is not compatible, like HDFS and Azure. Yes, HDFS and Azure are also implemented. Yes. And even if it is just HTTP server. Yes. <laughs> yes. You mentioned the uh, log storage, static HTTP server. Yes. And file system. Do you have use cases you would recommend for the three different or three Use cases. Different? Well, if you do not want to, to care about uh, running out of disk space and uh, their reliability, then you use uh, the uh, system that already provides that. So I think that's it's, uh, it's just a matter of, of your preference. If you want to take uh, care about it yourself or want to lay it down to the system. And for uh, static files, uh, the use case is sharing of a read-only data source across multiple instances. Yes, is the feature like uh, very little people know about that because you didn't share it. But uh, you can uh, load, uh, like uh, make the house tables, uh, load uh, the result data into some static HTTP server. And uh, then on any click house instance, you just attach the table and uh, you can uh, uh, use this data and uh, query it. Like, uh, and uh, the table engine is still merged to it. Like uh, there are, Mm, not only merge tree uh, storage on this uh, remote uh, object storages, but also like uh, table functions and integration engines. And uh, what is the difference uh, about them is that uh, the data is still stored on the uh, object storage in any format like CSV, TSV and so on. And you can just read it with this engines. And uh, there's a difference with uh, what I talked uh, right now, because it is the merged fee storage. Yes. Uh, you said you have a limited amount of threads because of the risk of running out of memory. Uh, yeah. No, it's like uh, it is max thread setting and it's not really makes sense to have it uh, more than the number of CPU cores. So and so this is why it is limited. Yeah, yeah, I understand. But uh, do you also have a setting to configure amount of memory for threads or is it hard for you to configure it somehow? 
Uh, it depends on the max threads, I think. Yes. Like the amount of memory is uh, proportionally depends on the max threads. So you ca cannot actually limit the amount of memory. What part did you pick this uh, limit amount of memory for threads? Is it uh, some smart algorithm? Or no, it's uh, just uh, like reading of data is uh, done in a streaming format. So like uh, each thread reads uh, in a streaming format, it doesn't read more than one buffer and one buffer is like one megabyte. So consider maybe uh, a few megabytes per thread. I don't know. It says maybe Alexi can tell more precisely. Uh, also the same question, but uh, differently stated, how to control the number of prefetches? Uh, you just like uh, a note that uh, this is one of the last optimizations about uh, like prefetching for all tasks is currently in development. Uh, that's it. And uh, how to control is there's a setting. And you just uh, specify the setting, and uh, no more than this number of prefetches will be done. Mm -hmm. uh, could you maybe tell us a bit more about the uh, cloud storage API and uh, what this prefetching does? I heard things like 100 millisecond latency for things that are in the cloud. And uh, so after doing this prefetch request, what does that get down to when doing the subsequent fetch request? Mm -hmm. I didn't really understand the question. Like, what did you? I mean, uh, like uh, we, we make a prefetch, yeah. it means uh, we put the task in the thread pool um, to read to the next portion of data. But is the prefetch part of the QuickHouse API or is that part of what the cloud providers would do? Uh, it's, uh, it's our code. Okay. Yes. Let me also explain. So imagine you need to read from 10 columns and the latency of object storage is 100 milliseconds. And if you will read one column, it will return a result, read another and another, it will take one second. But you can first uh, order the next reading of every column in a separate thread pool in background. And then read these columns as usual, but the data will already be prepared. Okay, so you're starting to read on a request and then kind of like letting it kind of fetch mm -hmm. in the background. Yeah, it will be read in background, and the main thread will just pick up the result. Okay. And uh, ideally, it will take just 100 milliseconds. We cannot do some magic to lo to make it even less, but we can uh, just uh, make it like uh, a single request. Mm. Yes? Uh, what about the integrity with Azure and Blob Storage? And uh, what about like when it comes to distributed computing, for example, parquet files, is there any support for parquet files? Um, about Azure integration, uh, there's a full Azure integration with the Merge Suite Table engine, but uh, actually there's no integration for the integration engine as Azure, but it should have been added, but it wasn't. Yes. And there's parquet files, for example? Uh, parquet files, yeah, they can be processed. So uh, you can use uh, parquet files on S3 and HDFS, not yes. yet on Azure. Yes, Azure is like very easy to add. It just wasn't added for some reason. So you can store parquet files in both storage. Uh, yes, and like it is already, it already works for S3 HDFS and like it's. Yes. You can do select and insert into parquet on S3. Yeah. It will just publish your data in parquet format. Yeah, you can do both on search and select. So by default, you use your own form data format. Yes. You, but you can choose to do. Can you choose to store in parquet instead? Yes. <laughs> but it will be a little different. Like it's not merged to you. Mm -hmm. So it will be slower right? because like with merge tree, like we know where the mark, we, we have the primary index in, in memory. We, we have the mark class, all these optimizations in parquet. So it will be a little bit less optimized, I guess. Yes. Any more questions? Okay. <laughs>